One thing that has been a bit confusing the last couple of years was how to deal with 2D lighting in Unity. Unity of course started out as a 3D engine and has since created a bunch of tools to make working with 2D a lot easier. However, up until this point we've been creating all of our 2D games for a 3D renderer. And if we were to use lights, they were 3D lights. But Unity has now created a 2D specific renderer. Woo! 2 D. <laughs> 2 2 <laughs> this means that lighting is optimized for 2D and that we aren't wasting a bunch of resources on calculating a third dimension the user will never see. It also means that Unity has created a bunch of 2D specific lights that are much more flexible than 3D lights. But before we get too far into it, this video is sponsored by Zenva Academy. Zenva is a Unity authorized learning partner, which means that their Unity curriculums have been reviewed and approved by Unity themselves. This ensures top quality courses that will take you all the way from beginner to intermediate and more advanced content. The courses are project based and include everything from 2D, 3D, AR and VR to making custom avatars and big RPG systems. With a one-time payment, you get lifetime access to all courses included in a curriculum, in-course support by expert instructors, and by using the coupon code BRAKIES, you get 15% off. Also, right now, we have a special offer where you can sign up for their 5-day Unity Bootcamp for free. You can, of course, do so by clicking the links in the description. So, lights on, it's showtime. <laughs> so as you can see, I've set up this simple example scene here using some of the assets from one of my recent game projects. The game is called Date Night and if you want to see how I made it, we have a video showing exactly that. Of course, if you want to use the same example project, I'll have a link for that in the description. Now the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we're using Unity 2019.2 or later. At the time of recording this video, this version is currently in beta, so I'll be using the beta version. We also want to go to Window and open up the Package Manager. Here we want to select All Packages and scroll to the one called Lightweight RP for Render Pipeline. Let's open this up and choose See All Versions. And you want to navigate to the latest version here. In my case, that is 6.7.1. And that is the version where these lights are first introduced. So you need to make sure that you're using this or later. To do that, you can simply click it. And if it isn't already installed, you will have the option to do so here. Great, now we can close down the package manager and we are now ready to set up our project to use the lightweight render pipeline. To do this, let's go edit. Let's navigate to our project settings. I'm gonna go to the graphics tab here. And as you can see, there's a slot here for a render pipeline asset. And in my case, this is empty. If you already have a pipeline asset here, that's great. In my case, I do not. So I'm gonna go ahead and create one. To do this, we'll go to the project, hit create, go under rendering, Lightweight Render Pipeline and select the Pipeline Asset. And I'm just going to call it WRP Asset. We then take this asset and drag it into the slot. And that's all for our project settings. Our Unity project is now using Lightweight. However, Lightweight can be used for both 3D and 2D games. So we want to let Lightweight know that we are working in 2D. To do this, we can select the LWRP Asset that we just created. And here we have a bunch of settings for configuring Lightweight. In our case, we want to change the renderer type from forward renderer, which is a three-dimensional renderer, to a custom renderer. So now we have a slot where we can input a custom renderer. And this is where the cool part comes because Unity has now created a 2D specific renderer. So to use this, we'll go create, rendering, lightweight render pipeline, and let's select the 2D renderer. Let's just call it 2D renderer. Let's select our LWRP asset and drag that in as our data. And voila, now Unity will only render 2D lights. Of course, nothing is happening in our scene, so it isn't that magical yet. And the reason for this is that all of our different sprites here are all using the default sprites material, which is an unlit material, so it won't react to lighting at all. However, if we go ahead and drag in a new sprite, so I'm just going to select any of the sprites in my folder here, you will see that it's completely black because we don't have any lights in our scene. You can also see that on a material, it's using sprite lit default. So all we need to do is change this on all of our different objects. And Unity has created a really easy way for us to do this. Simply go edit, render pipeline, lightweight render pipeline, 2D renderer. And here we can upgrade our scene to the 2D renderer. Let's click that, hit proceed. And as you can see, it tells us the name of all the objects that was upgraded. And upgraded just means it swapped out the material. And if we clear that, and have a look at our scene, it's completely black. Woohoo! 
So we're now ready to add lights into our scene. And let's start with a point light. So let's right click in our hierarchy, go light, 2D, and let's select a point light. As you can see, it immediately appears here. The radius isn't that big, so I'm gonna go ahead and increase it. And when I do, we can see more and more of our level. However, you will notice that our background still appears completely black. The reason for this is that 2D lights allow us to choose what sorting layers to target. This is a really cool feature because it gives us a lot of control. However, it also means that we need to go in here and include all of our target sorting layers for this light. And we can now see the light spilling on to our foreground and background as well. So I'm gonna use this as the light emitting from the candle of our dinner here. So I'm gonna move it up. I'm also going to increase the outer radius a bit more. And as you can see, we can also play with the inner radius to fill this out in any way that we'd like. I'm just gonna leave that at zero for now. We can also play around with the fall off intensity, which allows us to kind of smooth out the effect. And as with all other lights, we have an intensity slider as well as the ability to adjust color. So in my case, I'm gonna make this way more orange. I think that looks pretty cool. And we now have kind of the effect of a candlelight. You'll also notice that anything that isn't currently being lit is completely black. Now this might be something that you want in some cases, but here I think it's a bit too much. So to fix this, let's go ahead and add a light to the global light. This is simply going to shine light uniformly onto all selected objects. So again, I'm gonna target all sorting layers and I'm simply going to decrease the intensity here to something like 0.3. And I'm also going to change the color to kind of a dusty purple. I think that gives a pretty cool dungeony look. That definitely already looks a lot better. So what else can we add to this scene? Well, let's go in and let's duplicate our point light by simply hitting Control D. And let's move this over to the blue platform. Let's change the color here to a light blue. And right away, I think that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna do the same thing, but for our purple platform and change the hue to a bright purple. There we go, that already looks so much better. In fact, a really cool thing about these point lights is that they can also be used as spotlights. Simply duplicate this one. I'm gonna change the color here to a more yellowy tint. And we can simply click and drag on any one of these points to change the angle. And we have both an inner and an outer angle if we wanna create a bit of feathering. And right away, we have a point light, pretty cool. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this from my scene here. And let's try and create a new light. And this one is going to be a sprite light. So sprite lights, as the name suggests, basically allow us to input a sprite that will light up our scene. In my case, I've gone ahead and found this sprite cookie. This was part of some 2D light samples that Unity put on GitHub. I'll of course have a link for that in the description as well. And it works really well if we simply drag this into the sprite slot and change the target sorting layers to all. And right away we can see the sprite kind of appearing on top of our scene and illuminating the objects. Now I'm just gonna put this on top of our blue player here. I'm gonna change the color to a bluish tint. And now it looks like our blue player is shining. Pretty cool. And let's just do the same thing for our pink one. Awesome. Now a really cool light type that is specific to 2D is the new freeform light. So if we right click, go light, 2D, and choose freeform, this light basically allows us to draw the shape of our own light. I think you can do some really, really cool things with this. If, for example, we wanted to have a pit of acid at the bottom of our level here, well, then we could simply draw in the light for this pit of acid. So I do some kind of a square here. It goes up to around here. And of course, you can add as many points as you'd like for this or simply select and delete them. And when you're done, simply stop editing this shape. We then select all for our sorting layers. You can now see that it's illuminating our scene. For the color here, I'm gonna change that to a green for that acid look. We can also play around with the fall off in order to kind of adjust the fade that we're getting. And as you can see, it kind of looks like we have this light shining from beneath across this entire section. Really, really cool. And the final light that we have, if we go under light 2D, is the parametric light. And this basically allows us to create light shapes with X amount of corners. So if we just set this to all, as you can see, we now have a five-sided polygon as our light. And we can go in and adjust the amount of sides. So now we have a triangle, we can also do a square and pretty much just keep going. 
I'm just gonna leave this at five sides and put it in the middle here. And as always, we have a radius as well as some fall off. We can also adjust the angle. As you can see, there's plenty of fun stuff that you can do with this. However, I don't think it suits this scene, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. Also, I think our acid light down here cuts off a bit too quick, so I'm just going to increase the fall off a bit more. That looks a lot better. Now, one of the things that is really cool about this new system is that it's now a lot easier to work with normal maps. Yes, finally. If, for example, we wanted to apply a normal map to the stones in the background here, all we need to do is simply select our background, go to the sprite editor, and here we now have a new option called secondary textures. If we hit the plus sign here, and this needs to be exact, so underscore normal map, just like this, you can't name it anything that you want, you need to name it exactly this, and then specify a texture. And I've of course gone ahead and created a normal map version of this background, so I'm simply going to drag that in and hit apply. Of course, make sure to select all normal maps you're using and set the texture type to normal map. Now to have this show inside of our scene, we then need to select our lights. I'm just gonna exclude the global light here. And as you'll discover, there's a checkbox here called use normal map. So this of course allows you to choose if you want your lights to be affected by normal maps or not. In this case, we'll simply set that to true. And as you can see right away, we really clearly get that normal mapped effect. I'm just gonna go ahead and increase the distance here to lower the effect a bit. And right away, I think that looks really cool. Awesome. Now just to show the effects of adding a normal map more clearly, I've gone ahead and created this simple space example. All this has is a space background as well as a rock that is kind of just floating around here. I've also gone ahead and added a global light that just gives a bit of light to the background here. It does nothing for the rock. And then a point light that is affecting the rock only. And as you can see, it looks fine when we're moving around the light, but the rock definitely does not look three dimensional. So to have our light bounce more realistically off the rock, I've gone ahead and added a normal map in the exact same way that we did with the background. So going into the sprite editor, going under secondary textures and simply adding it in here with the name underscore normal map. And now if we go to our point light here and choose use normal map, we can see just how much three dimensional character this really brings out in our rock. We can see light way more realistically bouncing off these different surfaces of our rock. Really cool. And this rock is also part of the 2D samples that Unity put up. Again, link for that in the description. So now we have a lit scene in Unity that is fully 2D using the new 2D renderer. Really cool. So that's pretty much it for this video. Now I think there are definitely some things that could help improve this new 2D lighting system. Most of them are smaller UI UX changes to make things feel more polished and I'm sure those are coming soon. However, one big thing for me would be shadows that are based on the shape of sprites, similar to an asset like 2D DL. Luckily, I went to the Unity forums and found this reply that indicates that shadows are planned for later this year. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Also, don't forget to check out Zenva Academy. Get 15% off with the coupon code keys and sign up for their five-day Unity bootcamp using the links in the description. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in May and a special thanks to Tucson Konovsky, Daniel Dosanik, Naoki Iwasaki, Shane Cleveland, Chris Sullivan, Konstantinos Kerenzas, Infinity PBR, Faisal Marify, Leo Lissette, Ronin, Gregory Pierce, Tim of Holderbach, Kiro Svideski and Erasmus. You guys rock!